Hi, this is Rob Drummond at the Confusion Clinic. This video is going to look at tracking offline activity from your Google Ad Spend. So you might remember last time we were talking about the AdWords Profit Funnel, which says that when you run ads with Google, you're buying impressions on Google Search Inventory. And your outcome of the ads that you run is that you should be generating customer lifetime value. And actually, the measuring conversions is, is a great starting point, but conversions are still an interim measure. What we want to be moving towards is we want to be moving down the funnel. So we're measuring which parts of our ad spend, which campaigns and which ad groups are generating the most customer lifetime profit. And that's what we're talking about in today's video. So last time was really talking about conversion tracking 101. So conversion tracking 101 is putting conversion tracking scripts on thank you pages. Today we're really talking about conversion tracking 301, which is importing offline conversions back into AdWords with real conversion values. So today's video is more complicated, but don't worry, stick with me and it'll all be okay in the end. There are three types of offline conversion tracking we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about call tracking and different levels of call tracking. We're going to talk about importing offline conversions back into AdWords. And we're going to talk about storing AdWords data in your CRM system. So something to think about at the moment is you need to think about what time frame you sell in. So let's say that someone here does a Google search, clicks on your ad, arrives at your website and makes an inquiry of some sort. How long is it before they become a customer? If it's within 90 days, then you can import offline conversions back into AdWords using the conversion import tool. So we're going to look at that a little bit later on. But if you're like me and you have a longer sales time frame than 90 days, so quite typically someone will sign up for my email list and they'll sit on my email list for about a year or so and then eventually they'll decide that they trust me and will initiate some sort of sales conversation. In that situation you need to be storing AdWords, AdWords data in your CRM system which then means that there's no expiry on the conversion tracking information that you're storing. So we're going to look at call tracking first. So the first option you've got for call tracking is native AdWords call tracking. So there's now an option in AdWords where someone sees your ad, they click on your ad, they come through to your website. What you can do on your web pages is you can replace your phone number with a Google tracked phone number. So if that visitor phones that number, Google knows what ad they clicked on, what keyword they searched for, and they can record a conversion in the correct place in AdWords. There's technical instructions for how to set this up at the link underneath the image. So if you go to goo.gl forward slash big G, big W, big D, big D, small K, small U, there's technical instructions on how to set this up. But what you'll need to do is once you've created your new conversion, you'll have to select the middle option, which is calls to a telephone number on your website. There's two other options here that we're not going to talk about in this video. You can also track a conversion when someone clicks or taps a click to call number on a mobile web page. And you can also track conversions when someone phones the number that gets displayed with your ad on the search results page. I think you want to be doing both of those as well. But what we're going to be talking about today is when someone phones a number on your website. So you'll go through and you'll you'll give the conversion a name, so call it, you know, something like phone call from website or something that makes sense. But the problem here is that you still have to assign an arbitrary conversion value. So in this section here, you still have to tell Google how much the conversion is worth to your business. And what Google will then do is when a phone call happens and the call length is longer than this time period that you specify here. Google will then record a conversion in AdWords with the value that you set in this field here. I don't know how this looks in America, um, but the way that this looks 
in the UK is that the numbers that you replace with the Google track numbers, you'll end up with an 03 number. So if you, for example, um, sell locally and you have a local extension as part of your phone number, you will lose the local extension by using this. Um, it, it appears that Google only used the 03 starting point. So that's, that's just something to consider. Um, Google have been saying for a while that they're going to introduce some local call extension options, but um, I haven't seen any progress on that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold your breath. The next option we're going to look at is importing offline conversions. So again, in AdWords, you'll need to go in and set up a new conversion, but this time we're going to select the import option. Once you've selected that, you'll need to give the import a name. So you'll call it something like offline sale. And this time you're going to select that each conversion has a different value because what we're going to do here is we're going to import the actual sale value of the offline sale back into AdWords. So ultimately what you're going to do on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis perhaps is you'll come into AdWords, you'll go into the conversion section and then you'll select this uploads option on the left and you'll upload a spreadsheet of conversions that have happened offline in the last week or in the last two weeks or whatever the time period is since you last uploaded your conversions. So the way to do this is you need to start maintaining a spreadsheet like this. If you'd like to get a copy of this spreadsheet, again, you can go to the shortened URL down here, which, which is goo.gl forward slash big X, big Z, small J, big G, two, small Q. If you go to that, it will go to the template that, I'm, that I have a screenshot of here. And what you need to do is you need to store what Google calls the Google Click ID. So you'll need to store this GCL ID. So what happens is when someone sees your ad on the Google search results page and they click on your ad, when they come through to the website, Google adds a little thing to the URL, which, which will say GCL ID equals, and then there'll be a string. So what you need to do to import a conversion back into AdWords is you need to, you need to somehow store that, that click ID. So there's a few things that we're going to do here. First of all, you need to have auto tagging turned on. So you'll need to go into your settings. So go into the shared library, go into URL options and make sure that auto tagging is turned on. Then you might have to have a word with a developer because what you'll need to do then is when someone converts on your website, so let's say for example someone fills in a form, what you'll need to do is you'll need to pull in the AdWords click ID as part of the form data that gets sent through. So that this is actually a screenshot of um, an email that I've created for a client where obviously they get the the inquiry details but we're also pulling in the AdWords click ID. So if you're not very technical you'll need to work with a developer to do this um, but basically what we do is we we store the click ID in a cookie when the visitor gets to the website and then I have, I have a hidden field in the form that pulls out the cookie value and sends it to me with the inquiry, which then means that in our spreadsheet, we can now take this, this click ID, add it into the spreadsheet, and then if this inquiry eventually leads to a sale, I can actually put an actual sale value against, against this inquiry. In this example, the conversion name wouldn't be stale if sold. The conversion name actually, if we go back a few slides, the conversion name would be whatever name you give your your imported conversion. So in this case, offline sale would replace sale if sold. So you'd have your click ID, offline sale, conversion value, and then this spreadsheet is what you would then upload into AdWords every few weeks. So you'd go into your so you'd go into AdWords, you go to Tools and Conversions, Uploads, and you'd upload this file. What Google will, will then do, because, because the click ID tells Google what 
ad was clicked on, what keyword was clicked on, and they'll record the conversion with the actual conversion value in the correct place. So this works well for form inquiries, but what if someone, for example, sees your Google ad, clicks on your Google ad, gets to the website, and then decides to come and see you in store? Then you need to be a bit imaginative to get their Google Click ID, because obviously when when the person comes and sees you in person, you can't ask them what their AdWords Click ID was. And you can't ask them where they found you because they won't remember. So you need to find a way to get them back to your website. So, so the way around it in that situation is to have some sort of process where you either incentivize them or otherwise to go back to a particular page in your website where you have a form that also submits and looks for the Google Click ID and sends it to you. So maybe you have a step, for example, where uh, when people come to see you in store, perhaps you offer a small incentive for someone to confirm their email address with you. And when they arrive at, on that page on your website, you have, you have, you have a form that finds their true click ID and sends their click ID to you as an email. That's a little bit more advanced, so if that, if that doesn't quite make sense at the moment, then then um, you know perhaps that's something to discuss with us. The caveat to this, of course, is that it only works within a 90-day window of the original click. So the conversion time here that you have to set has to be within 90 days of when the original click happened. So we've talked about how to capture the Google Click ID when someone fills in a form on your website. But what if someone phones you up? If someone can phone you up and make an inquiry over the phone, then you need to be using a third party call tracking service. There are various call tracking services available. I don't claim to have analyzed all of them and obviously I could only speak from first hand experience. But this is a screenshot from a service that I'm using with one client called MediaHawk. So what services like MediaHawk will do is they will equate individual phone calls. So this phone call happened from this number on the 28th of January at 9.22 in the morning. It tells you the ring length, the call length. It tells you what the source and the medium was and also what the keyword was. So what this does is this equates individual keywords to individual phone calls. What we're also doing here is we're also pulling in the click ID. So this person has seen an ad, they've clicked on an ad, they've come through to the website and they've seen our number and they've phoned the number and MediaHawk is telling us what their click ID is. So like in the previous step then what we can do is we can add this click ID to our conversion import spreadsheet and import an actual conversion value if this inquiry does lead to a sale. So that's that's the conversion import. If you need to go beyond 90 days, you need to be storing keyword information in your CRM system. So I happen to use Infusionsoft. Um, other CRM systems that you might be using might include Salesforce, Sugar CRM, um, Zoho CRM. There's, there's various options. Um, I, I can only speak from first-hand experience with what works for me in Infusionsoft. Um, but if you use another CRM system, you'll obviously just have to find out how to do this. So in Infusionsoft, I have a custom tab on the contact record called Web. And on Web, what I have is a series of Google Analytics fields. So I store, so I store the ad ID. So GA content is the ad ID. I store the source. I store the medium. I store the keyword they search for. I store the campaign ID. And I also store the Google Click ID in here as well. But what this now means is that I can now go beyond the 90 days because this is always going to be, this is always going to be in Infusionsoft on the contact record. So then, so then what I can do in Infusionsoft is I can upload my, I can upload how much I've spent on a particular campaign into Infusionsoft 
as a lead source expense and I can compare how much I've spent on a campaign with actually how much revenue a campaign has generated over the lifetime that a customer has been with me, which now moves us way beyond the 90 days. So whereas in AdWords we'd be comparing cost versus total conversion value, so if you're, if you're importing conversions back into AdWords using the Google Click ID, what you'll end up with is accurate conversion value information in here, as long as the conversion happens within 90 days of the click. If you're using Infusionsoft, you'll have to upload your campaign expenses each month. So in other words, you'll have to upload how much you've spent on this campaign for the month. But what this will start to give you is it will compare. So a bit like we're comparing cost with total conversion value in AdWords, in Infusionsoft, you can then compare how much you've spent on this campaign with the lifetime revenue that this campaign has generated. So actually this goes way beyond the initial conversions and this this starts to give you an idea of how much long-term profit a particular AdWords campaign is generating and you'll, you'll get a more accurate return on investment figure from the lead source ROI reports in Infusionsoft. And that's that's really powerful because that that doesn't just tell you which campaigns are generating the most conversions. It tells you which campaigns are generating the most profit for you over a longer period of time. And that's really what you want to be moving towards. So that's really what we've been talking about today. We've talked about tracking phone calls and different options for tracking calls. We've talked about importing offline conversions back into AdWords if you're generating conversions within a 90-day window and we've talked about storing data in your in your CRM system so I've shown you how I store data against the contact record in Infusionsoft. You do need to consider the cost benefit analysis of the different options so the more advanced call tracking solutions have a monthly ongoing cost you need to decide whether the the cost of those solutions is worth it in terms of the benefit that you get from more accurate conversion information. So there's, there's, there's always a bit of a trade-off. To get better conversion tracking information, you're, going, you're always going to have to invest a bit of time researching the solutions and probably an ongoing monthly cost to provide or to get the data into your own systems. I don't really like the term ninja, but this is essentially the quote unquote ninja end of conversion tracking. I audit quite a lot of AdWords accounts and I do not see many AdWords advertisers really getting to grips with, with conversion tracking to this degree. So if you if you do take the advice in these videos and really move down the AdWords profit funnel, um, I, I think it's going to give you a big advantage because it's because it's going to tell you which parts of your AdWords account you can spend more money on and which parts of your AdWords spend you can reduce your spend on or cut out altogether. If you'd like to get more help, please email info at confusionclinic.com.